ready for you and the wonders you can do. Linda Carter's embodiment of Wonder Woman in the 1970s is nothing short of iconic. Her fierce and empowering portrayal of the Amazonian princess left an indelible mark in television history. Yet behind the scenes, not everything was as smooth as it appeared on screen. While audiences were captivated by her superheroic acts and striking attire, few knew the challenges faced with the very outfit that defined her character. Journey with us as we unravel the lesser-known tales of Wonder Woman's costume conundrums. The Dawn of Wonder Woman on TV In the mid-1970s, a new heroine was set to make her debut on the small screen. It was a time when superheroes were primarily reserved for comic books and animated shorts, and the prospect of bringing them to life in a live-action format was both exciting and fraught with uncertainties. Stepping into this brave new world was ABC Network with its ambitious project, a television series centered on one of DC Comics' most iconic characters, Wonder Woman. The decision to produce a live-action version of Wonder Woman was not without its skeptics. At the time, adapting such a well-loved and iconic character into a TV series presented numerous challenges. There were concerns over how the fantastic and mythical elements of the comic book would translate into a believable live-action format. The high production costs were another factor. Recreating the vibrant world of Wonder Woman, complete with her Amazonian origins and World War II setting, was no small feat. It required meticulous set designs, intricate costumes, and special effects that were advanced for the era. Despite these challenges, ABC took the leap of faith, and in November of 1975, Wonder Woman premiered. Linda Carter, a then relatively unknown actress, was cast in the titular role. Her striking beauty, combined with her ability to portray the strength and compassion of the character, quickly captivated audiences. Yet, behind the curtain, the soaring production costs were becoming a concern for the network. By the end of the first season, despite its popularity, the network was hesitant to commit to another round. The financial strain of maintaining the show's quality while balancing the books proved daunting. It seemed that the series, as promising as it was, might meet an early end. But as fate would have it, Wonder Woman found a new lease on life. CBS, sensing the potential in the show and perhaps seeing an opportunity where ABC saw a challenge, decided to pick up the series. It was a significant move that not only breathed new life into the character, but also marked a pivotal point in the show's evolution. CBS's acquisition of Wonder Woman came with its changes. To address the concerns of high production costs, the network made a series of strategic decisions. The most notable was the shift from the World War II setting, which defined the first season on ABC, to a contemporary modern-day backdrop. This move not only reduced costs related to period-specific sets and props, but also allowed for more relatable storylines that mirrored the era's socio-political climate. Alongside the change in setting, the character of Wonder Woman herself underwent slight alterations. As the narrative transitioned from the 1940s to the then-modern day, her costume was modified to better fit the new timeline. The Golden Eagle emblem, so characteristic of her initial outfit, was deemed too reflective of wartime symbols and was replaced with a more generic gold design. This costume change, subtle as it was, reflected the broader shift in the show's direction and narrative under CBS's banner, the tale of the two-piece bikini. The bikini, that daring two-piece ensemble, has a history that is as vibrant and dynamic as the garment itself. Originally intended as a celebration of freedom and female empowerment, its inception post, World War II, was to symbolize a break from the conventional and a leap towards modernity. Parisian engineer Louis Raird, the creator of the bikini, believed that this small swath of fabric would liberate women, capturing the essence of the post-war spirit. Its name, borrowed from the Bikini Atoll where the U.S. conducted nuclear tests, was intended to emphasize its explosive impact on fashion. Little did he know that the bikini would not just revolutionize beachwear but would also write a unique chapter in the story of Wonder Woman. When Wonder Woman first graced the television screen, her iconic costume was central to her character. 
A blend of patriotic motifs and Amazonian symbolism, it was as powerful as it was elegant. Yet, during the series, a two-piece bikini made its way into the costume repertoire, echoing the sentiment of freedom and power that Louis Raird originally envisaged. Designed to be worn during specific episodes, especially those that focused on Wonder Woman's origins and her ties to the Amazonian women, the bikini was a nod to the ancient gladiatorial outfits, highlighting her strength and agility. However, what seemed perfect on didn't always translate seamlessly on screen. The idea of an agile, high-flying, and combat-ready Wonder Woman wearing a bikini might have made thematic sense, but the practicalities of filming such action sequences brought forth a series of unexpected and often humorous challenges. As it turned out, the bikini, as stunning as it looked, was not entirely conducive to the high-octane stunts and action-packed sequences that became the hallmark of the show. There were instances where the bikini straps would snap mid-scene, or the garment would shift in ways that the designers hadn't anticipated. On more than one occasion, Linda Carter, ever the professional, would find herself momentarily grappling with her costume, attempting to prevent any unintentional revelations. The set would burst into laughter, the scene would be cut, and everyone would scramble to ensure the wardrobe malfunction was addressed before the next take. Additionally, the bikini posed some unique challenges in terms of continuity. Due to its dynamic nature, the garment would sometimes appear differently in various shots of the same scene, leading to editing nightmares. The meticulous process of ensuring costume consistency scene to scene became a game of keen observation and quick fixes. Over time, these humorous wardrobe malfunctions began to add up. While they provided the cast and crew with countless behind-the-scenes laughs, they also highlighted the need for a costume that was both visually appealing and functional. The realization dawned that while the bikini was indeed a symbol of empowerment, it might not be the most suitable outfit for a superhero constantly on the move. Evolution of Wonder Woman's Outfits From the moment she emerged from the pages of DC Comics and onto television screens, Wonder Woman's outfits have been as much a part of her story as her lasso of truth or her Amazonian origins. The portrayal of Wonder Woman by Linda Carter and the consequent adaptation of the outfit across three seasons of the show offer a fascinating lens into the character's evolving representation and the era's fashion dynamics. In the show's inaugural season, set against the backdrop of World War II, Wonder Woman donned an outfit that was an immediate homage to her comic book roots. The colors were bold, with the oh, primary hues of red, blue, and gold standing out distinctly. The bodice, a significant part of the ensemble was adorned with a striking gold eagle emblem. This eagle, steeped in symbolism, was reminiscent of her patriotic undertones and her association with the ancient Greek pantheon. It underscored her strength, freedom, and soaring spirit, making her not just an Amazonian princess, but also a beacon of hope during war-torn times. As the series transitioned into its second season, the story moved forward in time, transitioning from the World War II era to the 1970s. With this time leap, subtle yet noticeable shifts began to appear in Wonder Woman's costume. While the foundational elements of red, blue, and gold remained, there were changes in the patterns, materials, and even the iconic gold eagle emblem on her bodice. The eagle, which had been expansive and prominently spread across her chest in the first season, now became slightly streamlined. It's possible that this change was influenced by the evolving fashion aesthetics of the 70s, which favored sleeker designs. This version of the eagle was more stylized, with less emphasis on detailed feathers, but still very much a statement piece, emphasizing Wonder Woman's grace and agility. By the third season, there was yet another iteration, the overall costume design continued to be influenced by contemporary aesthetics. The fabric appeared more refined, likely benefiting from advancements in textile technology. The belt, cuffs, and even the boots saw modifications in design and detailing. The eagle emblem underwent further refinement, maintaining its stylized look but appearing more integrated with the entire outfit. It seemed less like an emblem placed onto a costume and more like a seamless part of the ensemble. This evolution could be interpreted as 
Wonder Woman's increasing integration with the world outside Themyscira, her Amazonian home. As she became more involved in the events and nuances of man's world, her attire subtly reflected this immersion. Linda Carter, Beyond the Costume Linda Carter's portrayal of Wonder Woman was not just about donning a costume and reading lines from a script. It was a passion, a dedication, and a commitment to bringing a beloved comic book character to life in the most authentic way possible. Carter's embodiment of Wonder Woman transcended the screen, turning her into an enduring symbol of strength, courage, and femininity. Carter's enthusiasm for her role was evident in how she approached every aspect of her character. She wasn't content with just acting. She wanted to be Wonder Woman. This drive led her to perform many of her own stunts, a rarity for lead actors, especially during the 1970s. This decision was not just about showcasing her physical prowess, but also about ensuring the authenticity of her portrayal. By stepping into the shoes, or rather, the boots, of the superheroine in every sense, Carter was able to exude a genuineness that resonated with viewers. One of the most memorable anecdotes that illustrate her dedication occurred during a helicopter stunt. The scene demanded Wonder Woman hang from the skid of a helicopter in mid-flight. Most actors would have unquestionably used a stunt double for such a perilous act. But Carter, ever committed to her role, chose to perform it herself. As the helicopter ascended with her dangling from it, a rush of adrenaline combined with a sheer sense of purpose overtook her. She held on, giving the scene her all, making it one of the most thrilling moments of the series. The helicopter incident took a toll, leaving her not just physically exhausted, but also mentally drained. Despite the risks, Carter's determination never wavered, and she continued to pour her heart and soul into the role, ensuring that Wonder Woman was depicted as a paragon of strength, both in mind and body. She often spoke about how Wonder Woman was more than just a superhero. She was a symbol of hope, equality, and empowerment. For Carter, Wonder Woman wasn't just a role she played for a few years on television. It was a mantle she carried, influencing her off-screen life as well. This deep connection ensured that her portrayal was not just about fights and action sequences, but also about the character's deeper ideals. Reflecting on her time as Wonder Woman, Carter once remarked how she felt a deep responsibility to ensure that the character was represented right, not just for the fans, but for all the young girls and women who saw Wonder Woman as a beacon of strength and inspiration. This sentiment was not just about her on-screen portrayal, but extended to her off-screen persona, where she continued to champion the values and ideals Wonder Woman stood for. Variants and special occasion costumes, the narrative of Wonder Woman on television wasn't just about a singular iconic outfit. Throughout the series, a variety of costumes were introduced, each tailored for specific scenarios and themes, giving depth and versatility to Diana Prince's alter ego. These outfits were more than just visual treats. They offered an insight into Wonder Woman's adaptability and the myriad situations she found herself in. One particularly striking variant was the full-body blue swimsuit, this ensemble was less about high-flying combat and more about underwater agility. The sleek, shimmering design allowed Wonder Woman to navigate aquatic terrains with the grace and elegance befitting an Amazonian princess. It wasn't just functional, but a visual representation of her fluidity and adaptability. Scenes featuring this costume showcased Wonder Woman's ability to handle threats not just on land or in the air, but also in the depths of the ocean, further solidifying her prowess as a multifaceted superhero. Then there was the Western-themed outfit, a delightful blend of the traditional Wonder Woman attire with elements reminiscent of the American Wild West. This outfit was a nod to the era of cowboys and outlaws, and it saw Wonder Woman in a setting far removed from the urban backdrop viewers were accustomed to. With high boots, fringes, and subtle changes in her tiara and belt, this outfit was a testament to the character's ability to blend into different eras and scenarios while still retaining her distinct identity. Whenever Wonder Woman found herself amidst saloons, horses, and dusty terrains, this was her go-to attire bridging the worlds of ancient Amazonian lore and American frontier history. The motorcycle variant of her outfit was another marvel. Designed to resonate with the subculture of motorcyclists, it was rugged yet stylish. 
Incorporating leather and protective gear, it allowed Wonder Woman to ride with the wind, taking on adversaries at high speeds. This was not just about changing her look, but adapting to the mechanics and risks of motorcycle riding. The outfit ensured she was adequately protected while retaining her iconic style, proving that even when on two wheels, Wonder Woman was unstoppable. Lastly, there was the unexpected yet utterly charming skateboarding outfit. A delightful blend of the 70s skateboard culture with the heroic aura of Wonder Woman, this outfit was a testament to the show's ability to keep up with contemporary trends. With knee-high socks, sneakers, and minor adjustments to her regular costume, Wonder Woman was ready to take on challenges in the rapidly evolving urban landscape. This variant was less about combat and more about agility, balance, and movement, highlighting another facet of her physical prowess. Each of these costume variants was introduced to suit specific narrative needs. Whether it was to blend into a unique setting like the Wild West, or to navigate specific terrains like the ocean or the city streets, these outfits showcased Wonder Woman's adaptability. But beyond their functional roles, these costumes also played a vital part in visual storytelling. They were a means to keep the character fresh and relevant, ensuring that she was not just confined to her iconic red, blue, and gold attire. By introducing these variants, the showrunners provided viewers with visual diversity, while also reinforcing the idea that Wonder Woman, much like the women she represented, was multifaceted and could adapt to any situation. The powers behind the bracelets and lasso. In the rich tapestry of comic book lore, few artifacts stand as symbolic and powerful as Wonder Woman's bracelets and lasso. These items aren't just accessories, they are extensions of her identity, ethos, and power. Originating from the pages of the comics, their significance and representation have evolved over the years, finding new life and interpretation in various media, including the television series starring Linda Carter. The bracelets, often referred to as the Bracelets of Submission, have their roots in Greek mythology. Made from the remnants of the Aegis, a shield used by Zeus, they serve as a constant reminder of the Amazonians' past. In comic lore, these bracelets were a symbol of the Amazons, enslavement by men and their eventual rebellion. By wearing them, Wonder Woman and her Amazonian sisters showcased their resilience and the vow they took to remain free and resist subjugation. Functionally, the bracelets are nearly indestructible and have the ability to deflect projectiles, be it bullets or energy beams. This became one of the most iconic visuals associated with Wonder Woman, her crossing her wrists to repel attacks, embodying both defense and defiance. The Lasso of Truth, on the other hand, is a manifestation of Wonder Woman's commitment to honesty and justice. Anyone ensnared by this golden rope is compelled to tell the truth, making it an invaluable tool in her quest to promote justice and peace. Its origins, much like the bracelets, are steeped in mythology. The lasso is said to be crafted by the god Hephaestus from the golden girdle of Gia. Beyond its truth-compelling properties, the lasso is unbreakable and can be extended to incredible lengths, making it a versatile weapon and tool in Wonder Woman's arsenal. When transitioning from the comic pages to the television screen, there were certain liberties taken, but the core essence of these artifacts remained intact. In the Linda Carter-led series, the bracelets retained their bullet-deflecting quality. This became a recurrent visual motif, symbolizing Wonder Woman's invulnerability and her ability to stand firm against adversity. The television series amplified this aspect, turning it into a theatrical and dynamic visual that resonated deeply with the viewers. The lasso of truth in the television adaptation was similarly truthful to its comic origins. Its golden sheen and the way it compelled truth from those ensnared became a pivotal plot device in several episodes. While the TV show focused heavily on its truth-revealing properties, it occasionally also showcased the lasso's other abilities, like its near-infinite extensibility and its potential as a tool for binding and controlling adversaries. However, a subtle difference between the comic and television depictions is the depth of mythology. While the comics delved deeply into the origins and mythological significance of these items, the TV series, perhaps due to constraints of episodic storytelling, focused more on their functional attributes. 
The series was more concerned with how these items aided Wonder Woman in her immediate challenges rather than their historical or symbolic nuances. Linda Carter's Personal Connection to the Costume the portrayal of a beloved character is more than just adopting a persona on screen. Sometimes it involves forming an intimate bond with every aspect of that character, including the costume. For Linda Carter, slipping into the iconic Wonder Woman outfit wasn't merely about putting on a costume. It was about becoming an emblem of strength, hope, and empowerment. Over the years, Carter's feelings towards the costume evolved reflecting both her personal journey and the broader cultural shifts around her. At the outset, Linda Carter embraced her role with open arms, understanding the gravity and impact her portrayal would have on countless fans. The costume, designed to mirror the essence of the comics while adding a touch of modernity for the 70s audience, became a symbol of femininity combined with fierce strength. Carter often expressed a sense of pride and responsibility when donning the outfit. She recognized the significance of representing a powerful female figure in a world dominated by male superheroes. However, Carter wasn't without her critiques. When Deborah Winger was introduced as Wonder Girl, her younger Amazonian counterpart, a new costume came into play. Winger's outfit echoed many elements of Carter's, but with subtle differences suited to a younger character. Carter, protective of the legacy they were building, had opinions about maintaining the dignity and essence of the characters. Without disparaging Winger's portrayal, Carter felt that every element, including the costume, needed to uplift and celebrate the character, rather than merely serve as an aesthetic choice. The balance between femininity, functionality, and empowerment was crucial for Carter, and she hoped to see that reflected in all iterations of Amazonian outfits. Over the years, Linda Carter's connection to the costume deepened. It wasn't just a garment, it was a piece of history, a testament to the journey she had undertaken and the millions of lives she had touched. Out of the various versions of the Wonder Woman costume she wore, one in particular held a special place in her heart, the original costume from the first season with the distinctive Golden Eagle emblem. This version, she felt, was a perfect blend of authenticity and modernity. It wasn't just about the design or the materials. It was about the memories associated with it, the challenges faced during that initial season, and the groundbreaking path they were paving. Remarkably, Carter managed to retain one of the original costumes from her time on the show, a rarity given that such pieces often end up in archives, museums, or private collections. Keeping this costume was not about nostalgia alone. It was a tangible link to a transformative period in her life. She often remarked how, even after all these years, the costume still resonated with power and emotion. For her, it was a reminder of the young woman she was, stepping into massive shoes, and the icon she became, public perception and guest stars' opinions. When Linda Carter took to the screen as Wonder Woman, she didn't just portray a comic book character, she became an emblem of a cultural movement. The 1970s was a period rife with change, with the women's liberation movement making significant strides. Against this backdrop, Wonder Woman's portrayal, and by extension her outfits, took on added significance. They weren't just superhero garb, but rather symbols of the evolving perception of femininity, power, and autonomy. The iconic Wonder Woman costume, with its blend of strength and allure, played a pivotal role in challenging traditional notions of femininity. It sent a clear message. Women could be powerful and assertive while still embracing their femininity. However, such a departure from conventional depictions wasn't without its critics and proponents. Roy Rogers, a notable guest star on the show and a legend in his own right, weighed in on this evolving cultural representation. Known for his cowboy persona, Rogers came from an era where depictions of women in media were starkly different. When he encountered Carter's Wonder Woman, it was an intersection of old Hollywood and the new wave of progressive thought. Rogers, with his gentlemanly charm, expressed admiration for Carter's portrayal. He appreciated the strength and dignity with which she carried the character and recognized the outfit as emblematic of the changing times. While he belonged to a more traditional era, Rogers' acknowledgement of Wonder Woman's significance showcased the bridging of generational perspectives. Public perception naturally was varied, 
While many celebrated the empowered depiction of a female superhero, some felt the costume was overly provocative. They believed it pandered to male fantasies rather than genuinely celebrating female empowerment. This division highlighted an essential debate of the era. How can femininity be expressed powerfully without it being misconstrued or objectified? Fans of the comics, on the other hand, appreciated the effort to keep the outfit close to its original design. They saw it as an authentic representation of the Amazonian warrior, bringing a beloved character to life. The nods to the comics, such as the gold eagle emblem and the star-spangled design, resonated with die-hard fans, bridging the world of comic panels with the technicolor glow of television screens. Moreover, as the show progressed and various outfits were introduced, it became evident that each costume had a narrative purpose. The full-body blue swimsuit or the Western-themed outfit weren't just wardrobe changes. They told stories of Wonder Woman's adaptability and versatility. They were emblematic of a woman who could traverse different terrains, challenges, and eras, all while remaining true to her core essence.